Hello, my friends. This is Wild Dog. Now, you've seen these once in your life, I bet. Either at school, on TV, or a book. Maybe you even kind of live by one. Well, they're a reminder of sorts of like the old world, you can say. And most of them are still standing in just the exact spot they were erected in thousands of years ago. What were they for? What was the purpose? Well, many people and scholars disagree on exact dates and builders and architects, uh, but mostly by kings and pharaohs of the times. Now, in modern times, we build these obelisks all over the world. But it's also debated, you know, are these structures once were part of a worldwide power source? Reasonings behind placing these obelisks. Or have they somehow been built on a special line or lines on the earth? Do they draw or store or transmit energy even? Are they sundials? Well, one thing I was able to find out may seem odd at the least to you. I found out a lot of things about these, but I couldn't find an argument or a disagreement about how they were placed upon the earth and what their position was. Nope, it's agreed. All ancient obelisks, obelisks did at one time, besides the one that got destroyed by natural disasters or war, they always face east to the rising sun. Always perfectly aligned. Always. Now many feats of our known history have been boasted to us in books and taught to us in cities and countries. Their greatest achievements were 400 tons solid granite obelisks traveling thousands of miles across oceans and deserts to be blissfully erected as monuments or, or, or gifts to kings and countries. Religions sought after them. Seeming over the centuries, these obelisks were sought after. They weren't destroyed. They were reconstructed, is what I found, not deconstructed. Now, that's just odd, right? Well, I mean, it's actually, that's just crazy, right? Because they're not even that pretty. A big giant pole in the middle of town, I mean, it always needs a big, huge real estate to just exist. But, yep, it's still there. And here in the U.S., we too have obelisks just placed here and there. And the biggest one and the most well-known being our Washington Monument. At the U.S. Capitol, out in front of a beautiful backdrop, is always, when you see these, water, fountains, majestic sceneries, right? Well, and if anyone didn't notice, yes, our Washington, D.C. buildings Looks like Tartaria. Amazing, right? It's another video, right? Now, if anyone searches for a topic in 2022, we're assisted by Google and Wikipedia, and we get the mainstream answer immediately. And remember, nothing that these artificial little helpers assist you with or the directs you to, um, nothing's not pre-programmed to do so. So their mainstream narrative reading, we find... Ancient religion agrees. Now, it may be in some cases it's Osiris and Isis and the names are different, Nimrod and Gilgamesh and what have you. Well, they often refer to these obelisks as phalluses. Now, to keep this PG-13, you just uh, look that up. But the ancient story of the sun god, Ra, it says some sort of a uh, masturbation and water uh, made the life on earth. So I'm not going to go into it, but obviously it's just absolutely crazy. Now in the U.S., this monument is to our first president. It's a 555-foot-tall 50, obelisk. Now I'm proposing it has been here for ages, reconstructed by the elders of its church. Now how can a story like that not have the main characters? Well, I bet you're guessing it's probably got something to do with old men playing Dungeons and Dragons again, right? <laughs> uh, it's close. Well, you're kind of dead on the money if you guess that. Uh, it's basically the Masons. 
by the inventors of D and D. Well, so these masons, yeah, the all-knowing, everlasting keepers of the secret of the heavens and earth, just couldn't get anyone to commit to their memorial before the Civil War. They seemed to run out of cash. And remember, <clears throat> this is before NASA and friends, so there was no slush fund. And the mighty and masterful Masons also underestimated the amount of block necessary to undertake the phallus of justice that they were going to erect. Due to the fact that the flood had laid layers of brittle granite and stone, you know, being all powerful, they had to just make do with the rocks from a nearby quarry in Massachusetts because of the brittleness. Now, during the Civil War, and there's always that one guy, right? You know, someone who just comes right through for everybody, right? A true hero. Well, he sketched this drawing of the mighty obelisk in all its glory, where it was to be a memorial for a great leader. Here we see the farmhouse and all the beef for the soldiers. Yep, he gave us the beefy half phallus picture. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist. So it's a field, right? It's, just, it's a field. And right up against a barn or house or whatever that is, uh, sits a uh, old janky rock, right? It's protected by cows and a three-foot fence, right? Okay. Well, here is the obelisk in its alleged first stage, right? And if you look at the base, you know, the structure itself, the edges, the weathering, right? But mostly the rocks making up the base. Now, these appear to my eyes to serve a dual purpose. Wants to be a platform, I guess they're going to put the berm up there, whatever. Or two, is the steps to the door that I see. Um, but the steps, they seem to be two and a half to three feet tall. Um, matching kind of the height to the door to scale. Now, when searching, you can find out when they built these structures. In ancient Egypt, involving God's name Osiris, Isis, and so on, it has a creation story behind it. It involves odd explanations of masturbation and dual sexuality beings or transvestites and weird frog people or what have you. Well, and uh, it reminded me of the scripture about, and I saw three unclean spirits look like frogs. But that's not what this is about. Moving on. Ra, being their big dog god, the ray of the sun, sun disk, their god is the first to wake up, I guess, in more ways than one, we understand. Um, the many temples to Nimrod, Gilgamesh, Osiris, Isis, all of Ishtar, uh, there's even a god in Asia, it's a, a sun god of some kind, it's a dragon god. But all who worship these sun gods, no matter where they are in the world, they share one thing in common. They place their pagan altars upon the earth and aligning their temples and graven images to the rising sun still to this day. Now, most are blind to see what's happening. They're too caught up in this world to care about fantasies and fairy tales, right? They poke fun at someone bringing up such silliness. Oh no, it's 666-33 again, and they make fun of it. Well, I'll tell you what. This old country boy from Mississippi is not the only one who sees what's going on here, right? See, I always see if my grandfather's left me a video or something. And in their case, well, I gotta go back to my really old grandfather's and I'm gonna find me a scroll or a letter so I can know what this is and know the truth, because my grandfathers, they never have lied to me to this day. And guess what? I found it. I sure did. And you know what? It was easy. First, let me tell you what I found. And then I'm going to tell you what they said. What I found was this. That the sun somehow moves around the face of the earth. And in the morning, wherever you are, it appears to arrive just for you. Then in the afternoon, traveling thousands of miles across the sky, it appears to leave you by yourself. With just only the stars to take over 
all the light from there. Now, all of the other gods and the graven images reside under the feet of the Most High God. And that's what I found. And I'll leave you with what our grandfathers said and the warnings and where they told us what this was for. And I love you all. According to National Park Service, inscribed on the aluminum cap, notable names and dates in the monument's construction are recalled, and on the east face, facing the rising sun, the Latin words, Laus Deo, which translate to, praise be to God. And he brought me into the inner court of the Most High, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of Jehovah and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east.